Hey everyone, Matt Pisarsik from RazorEmporium.com talking to you about one of the coolest and biggest subjects that we get asked all the time about, and that's the history of the Gillette Adjustable Series. Uh, we are going to try to cover this in one video. We will dive into some of uh, the details, but there's so much to cover here. Uh, in the beginning, Gillette had been making safety razors for 50, 60 years, um, up into the mid 50s, and they started to realize that not every man or woman out there needed to have the same shaving uh, angle or blade exposure or level of aggressiveness. And so they wanted to develop a way that you could change up the shave. So they had some pretty good success with the Super Speed Trio, like you see behind me, uh, with the uh, the blue tip for light shaving, regular for uh, a flare tip for regular shavers, and the red tip for heavy shaving. That model series did so well that right around 1954, 1955, some internal company memos and Gillette had basically said, hey, let's put this idea of three different razors into one handle. And that is where the idea of the adjustment uh, was born. So Gillette first started to make a deluxe razor. They, you know, a lot of times in Gillette's history, they start off with a bang and they wanted to go with a deluxe model. And so enter the legendary toggle. Now there's more than just one toggle out there. A lot of people know of the gold uh, one through nine toggle. Well, this really came out in 1958 or so. But before that, late 1955, early 1956, you have some of these other toggles hitting the scene. These are some of the uh, nickel toggles that came out. They also had gold ones. Um, and these models are something that are pretty hard to come by. They were serial numbered. Uh, the really early ones were even date coded with A3 on them. So third quarter um, there. But I mean, they, they're different. They may look very similar, but they're different in a lot of ways from the later produced toggle razor. Uh, they have a smaller toggle uh, knob itself that's kind of a miniature version. The one through nine don't uh, stop kind of arbitrarily. They actually have like a mechanical stop right on the dial. The clicker itself actually comes out of the body of the razor like a loop of metal. Um, the inside looks completely like a modern super speed. It does not look like the kind of the forked interior like you see on, on the production toggles. Um, so just so many differences with these nickel ones. They were produced and sold for uh, 750. Uh, they had gold versions up to 1450, which again, these are kind of some high prices for these razors. Um, they had this other kind of packaging presentation that was around Christmas time, more on a um, horizontal arrangement. This was kind of a much more elaborate design with a leather sleeve and leather box. So pretty cool. Um, but this series started doing well, and they, they tested this in small numbers. They made, they made you know, good amounts of these, but just a few thousand. They did a lot of test markets, and they found out that people wanted maybe another option. So that's where we start moving towards the next stage of the adjustment, and that is what we now call the fat boy, but it started its life off as what's called the Aquos, A-Q-O-S-S, -S, Aquos Razor. And a lot of times in Gillette's history, internal memos, they don't have a name yet for razors, so they call this the Aquos. And people call it the bottom dial fat boy today. Uh, there are actually, I think, six different versions of this. This is one we have here in the Razor and Point collection. And it is actually part of the test market that was done where they were trying to figure out if people wanted a less expensive version of these that had the adjustment mechanism, get different shaves out of it. Um, but where was this dial going to be? And so they said, well, let's try to put this dial down at the bottom. And let's see how people like that. They had different weights of handles. They had aluminum handles. They had brass handles. They had one through five configuration, one through nine configuration. So this is one of these uh, test, test market ones, basically, that was put out. And out of that research, Gillette found that people actually didn't like to have that, that adjustment knob in the same place as the twist to open knob. So that's when they moved and decided to keep the knob up at the top. Um, but again, that dial incorporates the same three settings as the, the, the Super Speed Trio. So one, two, and three 
are gonna be like your blue tip, four, five, and six, like your flare tip, seven, eight, nine, like your red tip. So it's supposed to kind of mimic that. So Gillette got this research back from their you know, test marketing and they figured out, hey, we need to put the, the dial back up at the top and but they liked the price point you know it was it was well below seven dollars you know i think they were selling this for 249 and then they were even able to say hey what if we sold it for 249 versus a dollar 95 for this budget model and that's actually where the red dot fat boy comes into play so a lot of people have heard of a red dot fat boy it is a fat boy that looks a lot like a standard one um, but it actually has a red indicator dial top here versus your standard Gillette razor, standard Gillette $1.95 razor is not like that at all. It just has a clicker. So this is actually a lot more like a toggle. In fact, a lot of the parts on these are like a toggle part. So the inside looks completely different on the red dots. And I, it's the same bottom tray as a toggle. I think they were just using nickel toggle parts and putting something together, which Gillette has done a lot. The dials, it's the same dial as off a toggle. So these, these red dot fat boys, uh, from what we know and some research, was basically uh, a test to see if they could sell them at $2.49 or if $1.95 did better. And obviously they found out the $1.95 did better. So these eventually made their way to the market as a way of Gillette kind of recouping their cost of investment of, of making them, the actual hard models. But I really believe that the model itself as a red dot was not some prototype. It was more of just figuring out if they could price it differently and they had a, a visual difference and so they could really track the sales of that. Um, so then we have the standard $1.95 razor. So all this research of adjustable razors really kind of coalesced in 1957, 1958 time. They were able to actually put out the $1.95 fat boy adjustable. Now these other razor models were made in you know, limited quantities, you know, harder to find. The dollar ninety-five was made in the hundreds of thousands, and this is really one of the most popular razors Gillette ever put out, and to this day is still kind of legendary in, in people wanting to, to acquire these. Um, and I've uh, had a longtime friend who was a, um, a salesman for the Gillette company in this time period, and he even had told me that, man, even back in the day, people loved the, the fat boy razors, as they've been now called. Don't forget, Gillette never called them Fat Boy. It was always just the dollar ninety-five adjustable, and the toggle. Uh, the toggle name was used a little bit, but they just referred to this as their their adjustable model. Um, so later, you have some kind of variations of this coming up again around Christmas time, nineteen fifty-eight. You have what they call the executive adjustable razor, which looks like a standard dollar ninety-five Fat Boy but it was sold for $5. It was gold plated, put in a much nicer case. Um, but the handle pattern is the same off of a t gold toggle. So that, that's the big difference you're gonna see is they have the same handle pattern. So then the standard toggle was released and that was something you see in 1958 with the date code of D, like dog. And then again in 1960 with the date code of F, like Frank. And so that's the one most people see is, is the one through nine gold toggle, um, you know, the quick open razor. Don't forget, that was, that was the real big thing with this toggle mechanism. It wasn't, in Gillette's mind, a way of making a deluxe thing. It, it literally was referred to in the patent drawings as the quick opening razor. Um, the whole reason Gillette even went to the, the butterfly door style was for quick blade changes. So this was a way of getting you, the consumer, to change blades even more frequently and even more uh, easily. So the quick opening razor model. So this was sold for 10 bucks um, and again was something that did really well for Gillette. And you know, you see it only out kind of around the holidays. So the, the date codes on this really you're going to see D4 and F4, Christmas time. Um, even when Gillette was developing the standard $1.95 adjustable razor, they had already been working behind the scenes, we've come to find out, on the next version of it. Because again, all of these beautiful razors were for you to use blades and use them faster. And so Gillette started developing a way of making that design even slimmer, slimmer profile head, slimmer handle. And that's when they, you know, they kind of thought that handle was clunky, even though we think it looks really beefy and cool today. 
you know, look at the standard Gillette Super Speed handles. They were trying to get much more close to that. So they came out with the slim adjustable. They slimmed everything down. And this came out in 1962, I believe, May of 1962. You see the release of the slim adjustable razor. And this is one, again, that they were able to make the mechanism cheaper. And they were able to get it out there in bigger quantities. All of this is overhead in Gillette's mind. This is all kind of a loss-leading product for you to buy the handle. So you really would use the blades. Uh, the Slim kind of made its debut in gold plating, so some people call them a gold Slim, and this was what they called the aristocrat adjustable. So don't forget that word aristocrat, Gillette had used for a long period of time as more or less a class of razor in their mind, and this was their $5 class of razor, really handsome presentation, 24 karat gold plating. Um, so the Slim kind of made its debut as this kind of handsome holiday razor and then it came into the regular packaging after that. And finally, the adjustable series kind of had a conclusion as the 60s wore on and they started to release the razor now uh, with a black aluminum handle that was anodized. So they really they started changing out those all brass components, you know, that you see over here into now aluminum components, making it again even cheaper. Still had that $1.95 price point. So this came in two different variations. This is a Super 109, which refers to the handle length being 109 millimeters. They had a Super 84, 84 millimeters. And then even later towards the 70s, you move into the black beauty as it's called, where the black um, there's a black plastic tray on the bottom side instead of a metal brass tray. So again, substituting those parts for uh, non-metal or plastic or aluminum. So another interesting note on the Super Adjustable, uh, being made out of aluminum, there is kind of uh, one bad thing that can happen with these razors. Sometimes this lower portion of the handle that does the, the twist open action can come out of its press fit. That press fits this little ring down here that holds this knob inside of the upper handle. If that comes out, our tool that we have that crimps them on all the other Gillette razors, it usually can't fix these because aluminum is such a soft metal that it usually ends up just kind of tearing that area up or th this material just doesn't really lend well to being recrimped again and again. You know, kind of like once it was flexed and pushed in originally, that's it. So if it does come out, it's, it's really a, a toss-up if it can be fixed. That is one kind of drawback or flaw from these. The other kind of thing we do see sometimes on the super adjustables, not all of them, but some of them, is that they can start turning. So if you, if you, if you start twisting this upper handle, it can start turning, it can start changing the blade gap, and uh, I've just noticed that a little bit more on the super adjustables. And lastly, that quarter turn. So a lot of people always ask about the legendary quarter turn. And a lot of the Gillette models do that where you go to lock it down and it moves a little bit past. You get, you get the blade snug and then that last little bit of turn. And in a lot of the uh, advertisements and instructions, Gillette did mention that. Um, I can tell you from experience that sometimes it's not always achievable on every single model. There's a lot of tolerances here at play to get everything just to line up just perfectly so that the length of the T-bar that connects your doors and the center rod come down to this area at just the right amount of threading and for you to get that little lock. I've, I've touched razors that are, you know, uh, right out of a package or like this, some of this new old stock, um, you know, or, or mint condition. And sometimes they, they have it, sometimes they don't. So I think that, you know, Gillette was producing these things in such high quantities. Again, these weren't collector pieces to, to, to Gillette. This was an item made to sell blades. I don't think the level of attention to detail on some of them was always as high as others. You know, if we're talking a, a $10 toggle from Gillette or a $1.95 aluminum handled super adjustable, there were, there were some differences here. And so a lot of times we can fix some of these uh, but not always. So this entire series, I know we've kind of done a quick crash course on it, but again, you're taking the super speed concept, having a different adjust uh, adjustable blade exposure, blade gap, um, and putting it into one handle. It's by far, I think, Gillette's claim to fame from today's wet shaving crowd. But when you go to buy them, there's a lot of questions. And uh, here at Razor Emporium, we obviously do a lot of servicing on these razors and they are the most popular razor to come in for service so we thought we'd also give you some tips and some buying kind of criterion to look for so by far 
the Gillette Fat Boys number one razor we get into our shop to work on. These razors lend themselves very well for mechanical repairs. Things that cannot be repaired, however, when you see deep gouges in the metal, and this goes across the board here, when you see deep gouges in the doors or deep gouges you know, in the, in, the, in the neural pattern, the handle pattern, stuff like that, that's not going to just magically go away. We can do some of that resurfacing of the metal, sanding it, you know, grinding, polishing, buffing, whatever. We can do a lot of that, but it can't always just disappear, especially when you introduce a pattern, like this neural pattern. If there was a, a mark on this handle that went right across it, we don't have a tool to reproduce this handle. So you're looking at a replacement part, which we do have some replacement parts from time to time. You can always inquire with us. Um, but that's what you're looking at. Uh, in terms of just general plate loss, if you just have general, you know, the nickels missing, again, that's not something that we can do with just cleaning it. You're now looking at something like a, a revamped item where it has to be actually stripped and replated. Um, but even just our simple tune-up service, uh, will cover things like mechanics. These razors, uh, th they have issues with opening a lot of times. Twist to open gets locked up. Sometimes it's just it's so soap scum or gunk. Sometimes it's more than that. It's actually a mechanical thing. These razors are a lot like a pair of eyeglasses. Uh, if they get dropped, they get damaged, if they get abused, the brass is soft enough that they'll get manipulated or kind of bent out of shape. And we can fix those things here uh, at the shop. So those are things that are, are okay to send in. If it's mechanically not sound, more than likely we can, we can fix that. Um, a lot of questions also come around the clicking. These dials, these little tiny springs you see in the, in the Fat Boy, in the Slim, the Super Adjustable, um, those little springs, if they break, which can happen, it's just a piece of spring steel. Again, it's not a fix for that really, it's really just a replacement. Um, so sometimes we do have those replacement parts. And the toggles are even more notorious. Their clicker is inside and it's even more um, prone to, to basically getting damaged. The adjustment mechanism, don't forget that again, this history was to tell you that it wasn't a finished product at the beginning, it was a finished product really towards the end and they were always getting better at making these razors. But that means that the toggle, for as beautiful as it looks and as collectible and desirable, is kind of a mechanism that Gillette got away from for adjusting. So it's actually not as easy and, and as, as reliable of a razor to adjust it as let's say your standard fat or even your slim. People ask me all the time, what's my favorite razor out of all of these? to use, and I think the most beautiful one, of course, is that some of these toggles are bottom dial, but in my personal bathroom, I have a slim adjustable because I think that's when they, it was a perfect intersection of the best adjustment mechanism, the best TTO mechanism, the, you know, a slim long handle, and it's reliable, it's all brass. I love the slims, my favorite. They're also the easiest for us to work on, in my opinion, in our shop. Very straightforward. Um, but, <clears throat> Again, this is a this is a, uh, a history that we've learned over uh, many years of working on these. Um, a lot of research we've done in collaboration with Gillette Company and Procter and Gamble, who now uh, owns that that division. Um, we're really grateful to have done some kind of exclusive research to get some of these numbers and some of these uh, early photographs. Uh, another really cool part of of doing this is that. A lot of these items that we've taken measurements off of, whether it's the blade gap or the tolerances or whatever, a lot of these items from, from our collection were actually never in circulation. So some of these came from Gillette salesmen, some of these came from people uh, who, like this actually came from somebody who worked at a grocery store and bought it brand new as an employee of the grocery store, put it in their sock drawer, and then contacted us, you know, 40 years later to, 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 you know, to inquire if we were interested in it. So we really enjoy the history of this, of this series and also learning as much as we can from original models, original drawings, original specs. Because um, there is a lot of speculation out there. A lot of people have taken guesses or they'll call everything a prototype when they don't really don't understand where its place in the progression really was. Here at Razor Emporium, we have spent the last several years um, you know, four or five, six years developing restoration techniques and refinishing and mechanical fixes for these razors. We don't get any, um, you know, drawings or extra parts from Gillette. A lot of this has come from experience. 
Uh, our processes are always getting better. If you look at what we've done today versus what we did two years ago or four years ago, it's always in a progression of getting better. So check back with us as a lot of this uh, capabilities we may have right now could be changed in the future. But we always strive to do the best possible job we can. We hope that today's kind of crash course on adjustable razors from Gillette has been helpful. Uh, whatever Gillette adjustable you choose, we are here to help service it or help uh, get it back into working order and uh, or answer any kind of questions on them. I think it's honestly my favorite period of time from Gillette was this adjustable series. Thank you so much for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And let us know if we missed anything or anything else you'd like to see from us here at Razor Reform. Thanks for watching, guys.